Good morning, my darlings, and happy Friday. Today is a great day. Charlie and I have just set our out of offices on because we are doing some fun things today. We are about to head off to some National Trust properties. We, Charlie actually got me a National Trust membership for Christmas, and I believe the houses themselves have been shut until now. So it's one of those things that we have been meaning to do for a long time, and today is the day. We have got quite a few beautiful properties around us, so we're gonna do a little bit of a National Trust road trip, which is gonna be great fun. Charlie's actually done all the planning, so I'm not sure where we're heading first. So it's gonna be a nice surprise. We thought we would do it today on a Friday and it would be a little bit quieter. It is a super duper miserable grey day, but at least we don't have any rain. If you didn't see the end of my last vlog, you may not have seen these beautiful new pieces. They definitely look more striking in the room from this side. But yes, I appreciate that Sunday's vlog was over an hour, so I don't blame you if you didn't quite get to the end. But if you didn't, you may not have spotted my two beautiful new bits of furniture in my dressing room and they are just so spectacular. I've got my Holland Cooper cape and YSL bag ready to go later on, but yes, this cloverleaf poof and Soho drum footstool from George Smith are just the absolute perfect finishing touches for this room and I could not be happier with these bits. Didn't really know what to wear today because it's not that cold, um, but it very much feels like an autumn day, even though we are in May. So I've just gone for some brown leggings. My Saint Laurent boots, I haven't actually worn these very much at all. In fact, I feel bad because throughout winter and autumn, I guess I just reached for my Chloe boots or my Prada boots the whole time. I got the Chloe boots very soon after getting these. So I think they just fell to the wayside and I feel a bit sorry for them. So I'm wearing these today. And then my H&M jumper. I've only just added some curls to my hair. So I'm gonna brush this out have some breakfast and then it's time to hit the road. Okay, we are on the road with one very soggy doggy. Quickly, that was called Rectory Farm. Oh, oh, how funny. Interesting. One very soggy doggy because Dexter decided just as we were about to get in the car to roll in the stinkiest, I don't know if it was rabbit or fox. I think fox. it was fox. Do you think it's fox? I don't yeah. know. He smells oh, fox. horrific. <laughs> he decided to have a major rolling session before we got in the car. But first stop is Upton House, which upon Googling is not dog friendly. So we're just gonna see if we're allowed to tootle around the gardens. And Dexy and Dicky are going to be meeting one of their very best friends there, Mr. Porter. Aren't you, Dick Dick? Yes, I like Porter. Yes. Yeah. He's a distinguished gentleman like I am. He's a very he's a very handsome little chap, isn't he? So then if we're completely not allowed dogs there, it's not a stress because next to that is somewhere called the National Herb Center, which I've heard great things about from our friends Rory and Nathan. And apparently there's a really nice dog walk there too. Have we got time to go there though? I'm trying to think of one. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of another herb pun, but I can't think. There aren't really many herb puns, that's no. the problem. Comment below with, with your best herb pun. I think it would be quite mint if we were allowed in there. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. apology for my lack of vlogging yesterday. It always happens when I'm with friends and plans changed yesterday. Basically we found out that most National Trust properties, turns out they don't allow dogs. So we ended up going to the National Herb Centre which is really close to Upton House and then this lovely place near us called Witchford Pottery and it's quite it's quite an iconic pottery if you are into your gardening. Basically their, their pots are like world renowned for being very frost resistant. And if you're into your gardening and you love Monty Dom, it is his favorite pot brand, <laughs> as in gardening pots. They've got a vegan cafe called The Straw Kitchen. So we had some nice coffees and cakes there. 
and then went for dinner at the Ebrington Arms, which I thought was just going to be like a typical cozy pub, but the food was so good. I don't think I got my camera out, so I'll pop some of the pictures that Charlie took on the screen here. If you go, flick to the section beyond the desserts because that's where all the snacks were and they were so delicious. We ordered them almost like little nibbles to begin with and I think I actually preferred the snacks to my main. It was really, really good. So today we are spending another day with friends, different friends, um, one of my old school friends, Millie, and her husband, Cal. So we're about to go to the farmhouse, <laughs> there's one to tick off your Cotswold bingo board, and I'm about to put together my outfit. I did want to do a workout this morning because I'm really excited to wear this workout stuff that I'm about to show you. Um, but let's just say quite a lot of wine <laughs> was consumed yesterday, so I'm going to do my workout tomorrow. But I can't wait to show you this collection of workout clothing. I've known about this for a couple of weeks now, um, and the brand Sweaty Betty has just started revealing teasers, and I think this is just going to be their most epic collection ever. You might have seen it on your Instagram um, and maybe in your inbox. Basically, Sweaty Betty are collaborating with Hollywood icon superstar Halle Berry and in particular her fitness brand which is called Respin and they have launched the most spectacular edit of workout clothing but of course everything we love about Sweaty Betty, all the functionality and beauty of their fabrics and also the coolness and spectacular design of Halle Berry and her brand. So I'm really excited to share some of my favorite bits from the collection with you this morning. I was very excited when this bag arrived full of bits from the collection. So let me show you what I think are, <clears throat> excuse me, the most iconic bits from the collection. I will leave the full collection linked down below. So as you can see, color-wise, it is very chic, very minimal. For me, it is my kind of like coolest gym gear. Like if I was going back to the gym and I wanted to just feel really cool, then this is absolutely the collection to wear, so. And as with a lot of Sweaty Betty collections, obviously you can mix and match. You can get shorts, you can get three quarter length trousers, you can get full length um, leggings. You can get the sports bras, you can get slightly different contrast stitching style leggings. And I've also got this t-shirt as well, which will be great to pop on over the top. I also have a kind of um, overcoat waterproof jacket, which I'm actually going to wear to the farmhouse now because the weather, as it has been for the past week, is just absolutely miserable. So this collection you can absolutely wear not only when you're working out, but also for more social occasions, your post-gym coffee, or even if you're not even going to go to the gym, you know, you can wear it as loungewear or style up your outfit with it. So these are Sweaty Betty's iconic zero gravity sculpt leggings. So they just make your bum and your body look fantastic. I also think the contrast stitching really adds to the flatteringness of these. And of course, nice and high-waisted. Sweaty Betty products, their material that they're made out of, you'll know this if you've ever worn Sweaty Betty for a particularly sweaty workout. They actually have sweat wicking fabric. So the fabric is so clever, it literally draws the sweat away from your skin, which just makes your workout a whole lot more comfortable. This is the branding of the edit, Halle Berry x Sweaty Betty. The respin edit, it just looks really, really cool. Her wellness brand is inspired by boxing and Japanese jiu-jitsu, and it is very much a limited edition collection. So I, don't, I think this is going to sell out pretty quickly. It launches today. I will have the link for this in the description box down below. If you caught my Instagram stories, hopefully you will have been able to sign up to the early access, but this is now available for everybody. But anyway, without further ado, let's do some trying on. Okay, so here we have the first set, and you may be quite shocked to see, to see me wearing all black, but the one time that I will wear all black is when I'm working out. It is universally the most flattering shade on most people. As you can see, I'm usually a cream, uh, in fact, this is part of the Sweaty Betty Halle Berry respin edit as well, so I'm gonna pop that on and show you in a second. But I mean, the fit of this collection is just absolutely gorgeous, as you would expect from Sweaty Betty. I really like the fact that the sports 
bra is a little bit longer. It's still got all the support. And these little shorts, not sure how much you can tell, but they've actually got a zip here, which is really helpful if you are perhaps going for a run, going for a cycle ride, a cycle ride, bicycle ride. You can pop your phone or your iPod. Do people still use iPods? <laughs> you can pop whatever in your little back pocket section. So the shorts are my first bottom. <laughs> Let me try on now and show you some of the leggings. I know some of you guys don't like the antique effect on my mirror, so I'll just show you here as well so you can see the fit. They do also have these sweaty Betty sculpt in them, so it's really nice on your bum. You can see the little pocket there as well. And this little branding here that says about the Halle Berry respin edit, I think looks really cool. So if you love this pattern, but you're more comfortable in full length leggings than shorts, then you'll be pleased to see, to be honest, I'm not sure if these are full length on most people or if they'll be three quarter length. I'm pretty sure they're full length. I am about five foot three, <laughs> so even three quarter leggings on me often end up being full length, but again, really nice and high waisted. There is a little kind of drawstring in here if you need it. Again, you've got the zip along the back, you've got the sculpting technology, and what I love, and again, what I love about the sports bra is the length of it means you feel really comfortable just wearing this. You can wear it as a top, whereas sometimes sports bras, if they're a little bit shorter, I always feel like I need to wear a t-shirt over the top but let me show you how it looks with the t-shirt on too and so here's the t-shirt from the front you might think it just looks like a fairly plain t-shirt it's a little bit sheer which is nice because then you get to see a little bit of the silhouette from the top underneath but then from the back hopefully we can see it's got a little open section here which is great for airflow when you're working out but also nice so that you just get little flashes of the sports bra underneath again to show you in real life without the reflection so you can see just a really gorgeous super soft casual t-shirt little open section at the back here and really nice flattering leggings the design on these is really subtle so if you like a really plain design then these feel like that but then you just have the little hint to the Halle Berry respin edit on them. You can see it's just a very faint kind of marking. I just find sweaty Betty leggings to be the most <laughs> flattering thing in the whole world. Whether I'm just doing a little bit of stretching in the morning and then I just wanna stay in my workout outfit, this is exactly the kind of outfit that is perfect for that. So these are probably my favorite leggings from the collection. I'm just a little bit obsessed with this contrast seam. I think it looks so cool. And of course you've got that zero gravity butt sculpting technology as well. Again, styled really nicely with the t-shirt. But what I'm gonna do is actually keep these leggings on because I just love to wear <laughs> leggings these days. So comfortable, love how high-waisted they are. You could also like tie the top in a little knot if you wanted to be ultra cool. Um, but I'm gonna actually whack on just a normal jumper and the coat or the jacket I should say from the collection to show you how I style it to wear to Soho Farmhouse. <laughs> and here we have the piece de resistance and it is the jacket that comes as part of the edit. It is perfect for those times when you need to get to the gym and it's miserable outside or maybe you just want to look amazing after your workout or maybe you're not even going to the gym. Like right now we're about to head for brunch with friends at the farmhouse and this is just perfect. As you may know, I'm not cool at all. I am not... I'm a feminine girly dresser but sometimes I do just want those pieces in my wardrobe that make me feel down with the kids, <laughs> make me feel cool and I realise that sentence means that I will never be any of those things but I think with my boots, these are my Prada boots, I think the leggings look amazing, I've just styled with a cashmere knit crossbody bag and then the jacket or coat from the collection. It has loads of pull strings which enable you to get a really lovely feminine silhouette. It's got that really cool detail that shows the branding from the collection on the sleeves. I just think that makes it look so cool and honestly I feel I feel very stylish <laughs> right now. Um, you've got a hood, you've got, obviously it's waterproof, it is essentially a raincoat. And it's double thickness as well so you're getting that warmth, so perfect for outdoor dining during spring showers. It does have a full length zip as well, so if it really gets awful weather later on, I will, be, I will be completely protected from the elements. But for now, this is my outfit of the day. So I hope you'll agree that this collection is not only just so fabulously efficient and effective with its design and its materials, but it also looks so fabulous. Sweaty Betty, I take my hats off to you. I can't wait to shop more of the collection on the day this video comes out. So I'll leave the whole thing linked down below and 
Very excitingly, I do have my discount code, which is so exciting to be able to share this with you again. I'll leave it on the screen here and in the description box down below. And now without further ado, it's time to go and get some brunch. my camera on the floor as I got out of the car so I'm hoping that this clip is going to be okay it does seem to be fairly indestructible but we couldn't resist picking up some apparently silver medal winning cinnamon buns from the bakery at the farmhouse I think if I entered my carrot cake cinnamon buns into that competition I would probably get the gold gold medal need to make some of them again lately soon rather silver medal silver medal I'll be honest yours are better yeah, I was gonna say my um, so carrot cake ones. That medal, yeah, good. that does look that does look pretty darn good. But it has got beautifully sunny, and we've just arrived home to um, the postman's just been. I have received some lovely bits and bobs. Dex, you cheeky little monkey, from Sophie Allport from their gardening collection. And then we also did a huge Amazon order with some gardening equipment um, and Virgin and Ball, I think it's called. So we're gonna unbox all of this and do a little bit of work outside. Can you get down from there, young sir? I have just swapped into my old Jules Gilet to keep me warm. And then this is actually one of my oldest pairs of Sweaty Betty leggings. So they've got this kind of grey and white pattern on the other side, but then when you flip them, they're just plain black. I'm going to pop my boots on and then we are going to be preparing, finally, our rose border at the front of the house. So this is the lovely delivery from Sophie Allport. They have just launched their gardening collection. The Bees Gardening Gloves, they've got this... Um, Kind of reinforced material on one side and then leather on the other very very cute i think this is a selection of secateurs what's that pruning yes oh they're beautiful wow. how cute is that hang that on a sec beautiful. so here we go this is the set of secateurs this is the bees pruning set do you want to repeat your um they are beautiful yep and what was your other one i bet you're buzzing about that <laughs> I am absolutely buzzing. You'll be bumbling around the garden. I sure will. Your jokes are starting to sting a little bit, mate. All right, I need you out. <laughs> Very good. So these are the little secateurs, really lovely wooden handles. And then we've got this gardening tool set as well, a little trowel, a gardening fork, and a kneeler. That's the most useful thing. It That's is. Brilliant. I'm gonna take that around the corner right now. And then we've got, my goodness, a lot of tools. All of which will be recycled. Of course. So let's get unpacking. Gosh, about half an hour later, and unfortunately the grey clouds are rolling in. Hopefully we'll still get a chance to do some gardening, but we have unboxed a heck of a lot of tools, and also, oh dear, the rain is already starting to splodge on these little markers. Um, so it's a mixture of bits from Amazon, Sarah Raven, Burgeon and Ball, and... Uh, garden trading so Charlie has ordered this string dispenser that he'll hang up in the shed and then you'll just pull the string through the middle there quite cute um, I'm sure he's gonna want to show you inside his shed at some point and then all of these markers I think this is a new apron and the chalk for marking the herbs I showed you these lovely bits from Sophie Allport and then these little almond shaped items are actually cages for my broccoli seedlings Well any seedlings that any rabbits or deer show an interest in nibbling So I have noticed that nearly all of my broccoli has been eaten by your friends. Mr. Radicchio Snuffler Charlie has ordered some woodland bluebells and Country Lane mix various seeds from Sarah Raven and then all of these bits. Would you like to briefly explain over the noise of the lawnmower? So, we have the attractive gardening tools, like this. Edger? The virgin and ball that we ordered. Yep. So these are obviously things, there's some things that we've been 
needing to get for a while, like this edging tool mm -hmm. uh, for the new borders. So obviously we'll be using this. Don't do it though. To keep the edge. And yeah. We've also got the shears. Yeah. Um, but then there's some more practical things which are a little less aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. They're proper hardcore. So this is a really, really heavy duty spade. Should we point out the brand name? Yeah, I know. It's weird, isn't it? It's called Corona. I feel sorry for every brand called Corona because obviously it's Latin for crown, isn't it? Oh. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. But the only the only little point I'll make about all these things, and I just don't get it. I love. I love all the products we've ordered, but they stick all these horrible stickers on. I know. Right here, and you cannot get them off. Charlie and I almost had an argument because I said, darling, I am not ruining my manicure yeah. to get the stickers. <laughs> you know, like, they could all learn something from, like, Apple and, like, the cold buying process. Because you buy something and get all excited. And then you get and frustrated. Now I'm frustrated because, look, I mean, it's impossible to get it off. Yeah, that is so annoying. Um, so that that's one little negative. But other than that, these are going to become really... These are all the sort of tools that hopefully we'll have for the next 30 years. Yeah. We've now got the right shed for them. So that's a sh super sharp spade with a stepping block on it. So you can yeah. actually like tread it into the ground. I'll be using this to remove the ivy roots shortly. That's Amazing. what this is for. Because, if, because basically I was trying to use one of our lovely wooden ones and I've almost buggered it because oh, no. because of the wood, it's actually split because of the weight. Wow. Wood. Whereas that this is, is quite mega. A beast. Um, one thing we're still searching for is a really good wheelbarrow because that was off Amazon. It's not quite up to the standards of what we need, is it? Nope. And then we have this ginormous monstrosity of a leaf rake, which will be very helpful in autumn. Um, and then these items here are hopefully going to support our peonies or dahlias, anything that gets massive. What's this one here? The one is a hoe, and the other one is a cultivator. Which is literally like in the Chronicles of Narnia when the storm yeah, comes in. <laughs> We're going to have to start putting all of our bits and bobs that are on the table inside because it is about to tinkle it down. We've just had 10 minutes of torrential downpour, so we ran inside and now the blue skies are back. This is just absolutely crazy weather. Totally crazy. So I've come up here to grab my sweet peas and some of my dahlias, which are doing incredibly well and I think it's about time I started hardening off some of these so that's basically where you start to bring plants outside for a few hours each day to get them used to the cooler temperatures so I'm going to bring down my more mature dahlias and the peas so that they can hopefully find their new place in the garden in a couple of weeks time. This is a very privileged moment I have been invited to share the man cave with you would you yeah. like to explain darling what you've been well, doing it's in here? very much a work in progress we, um, I have to thank, shout out to Mr. Ali Gordon, who is, I'm not very good at um, DIY, Ali's an absolute G, he's an absolute master, like he was in here, Jedi. he was like doing all these crazy things with a tape measure, I was really quite envious, so he helped me put this up, I mean it's really basic DIY, but I'm just not confident with it, so we put this up, it's from Oak and Rope, but Ali suggested we put screws up through here as well as on the back, so okay. it's really strong. Mm -hmm. I think the only shame about the design is that you obviously hide the quote. Yeah. But, you know, I guess it's kind of nice, you know the quote's there. So yeah. that's, that's with some of our new tools. Um, these are sort of more rustic, but I'm going to rejig them. But it's just Looks a good, good place to store stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put some hooks along here and along here for small hanging tools. Mm -hmm. I've got this to put other tools up here. Okay. Um, and then I think we need a few... I don't know, like maybe a few boxes and stuff. I'm going to keep my toolbox in here. It's going to be really, really tight. And I've got these battery lights with the clicker. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to stick the clicker here, yeah. like it's a light switch, and then have the four, Fantastic. you know, these are puck lights, which take the AA batteries okay. right here. Um, so it's coming together. Um, and then in here, the idea is, oh, sorry. And then I've also got this small, I think it's going to go, I don't know, actually probably in that corner. It's like, if you imagine like an umbrella rack, but for garden tools, so for ones that we can't hang up, the ones, you know the uglier ones we just bought, mm. they'll just go in that, so it's really tidy. Okay. So basically it's a tidy shed. And then, <laughs> come through, come through. Um, obviously we've got the logs here. I'll be honest, these are stacked here as much to make it look pretty from the house. Yeah. As they are, and we'll use them in the summer, but really we've got the log store in the house and the other one over there. Mm -hmm. And then I've got a welly boot rack coming for like our gardening wellies. <laughs> boom boom. I'm not gonna lie, I am sort of thinking, is there any way, because I really want to put a mini outdoor kitchen in at some point, is there any way we could put our wheelie bins? Do you know, it would just ruin the lawn. 
tra 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 traipsing so across the lawn. Because it's such a nice area where we've got them over there. Mm. It's such a great area for like a pizza oven or something. Mm. I don't know. In time, darling. In time. But then we're going to put these up here. Oh, we've got these bluebells to sow. Well, bluebells like being sheltered, so I reckon under this tree. It's woodland there for this area. Yeah. After doing a couple of hours of gardening, we will go out there again tomorrow and I will show you what we have done. We've decided that we needed fish and chips for dinner, so we've gone to the nearest town and I've got my batter sausage and chips, Charlie's got his haddock and chips, and I think we're gonna watch a film on Netflix. So, bon appetit for us and I will see you in the morning. My darlings I feel like the fact that I'm sat down <laughs> explains my energy levels this morning so I need to get up and get into the gym I am trying to get back into the habit I have very much fallen out of the habit of doing my workouts so this new gym attire is my motivation to get moving again sorry if the lights are flickering I've got my LED internal lights on and my camera does not love them um but i have got on of course my sweaty betty x halle berry respin edit i love these leggings they are just so oh, so flattering and i love them so much and then because i want to be a tiny bit warmer and more covered i've got the t-shirt on and then the matching sports bra to the leggings and then my little pull-on trainers i've also got on my favorite sports socks so you better do the best sports socks because they have a little bit of kind of voluminous fabric here which just stops your feet from sliding fully into your trainers stops with blisters and they're especially great for wearing on the peloton as well these socks so i'm gonna head into the gym i think i'm gonna have to do quite a lot of stretching this morning because after all the gardening yesterday and we're doing more gardening today my muscles just feel quite um bunched up so so quite a bit of stretching and then maybe a fairly easy peloton because I really don't want to have to wash my hair after this workout because we're just going to be gardening for the rest of this the day. This is incredibly random but I just put my dressing gown on the back of the bedroom door and I remembered a couple of things um, that I wanted to tell you from our trip to the farmhouse yesterday. As you will know if you've ever met Charlie in real life, he, he does just make friends with everybody and gets talking as though they've known each other for 10 years after like 30 seconds. So we always manage to get like little bits of um, information from people, not intentionally, but people just share a lot, a lot of things with us. And so we found out that firstly, on the note of my dressing gown, Soho Home, which is where my dressing gown is from and anyone that's ever owned one or stayed at one of the Soho houses will know just how amazing those dressing gowns are. They are being discontinued, so get your hands on one. I'll try and find them online um, and leave them linked down below, but you can get them from the Soho Home website and also from the Bista Village store, so stock up <laughs> if you love them as much as we do. However, he did also say that they are bringing out a new version gonna be slightly thinner which is a shame because I love the fluff on those but the new ones will have pockets which will be music to the ears again of anyone that's ever owned one of these or tried one because the one downside is the lack of pockets and the other bit of inside information gossip that he gave us was that um, Soho Home are opening two stores in London previously the only place to actually see the stuff physically was I believe at Soho Farmhouse and then at Vista Village so nowhere London centric. Obviously a lot of the stuff can be seen in situ in the houses, but um, yeah, they are opening a Soho home store in Carnaby Street where the Cowshed Spa used to be. And also, and this one's gonna be mega. Do you remember on the King's Road in Chelsea on Duke of York Square, there is that massive, at the moment it's a jigsaw store. It's the most amazing store building ever. It's got columns out the front, I think it's three stories. That is going to be a Soho home, which is going to be incredible, especially for any Londoners watching, anyone visiting London, if you want to shop Soho home, as you know, we're obsessed with it. So that's going to be incredible. And I think he said they're launching in July. So really, really soon. They've probably already started the fit, but yeah, a little bit of inside info for you. And yes, I'm putting off going to the gym. So let's, uh, let's just 
get this workout over and done with. quick body shower and back into my weekend gardening outfit. The sun is slightly out and I'm thinking it's going to be raining later on so we are going to get busy this morning. My first job, just a couple of chores in the kitchen garden. I notice there's some bits which can be planted out now. I'm pretty sure we are past the frosts and also now that we've got that order from garden trading I'm going to protect my new purple sprouting. You okay Dixie? purple sprouting broccoli. I think I've got some shallots that can go out as well and I'm just going to have a quick rummage through my seeds and see if there's anything else that can be direct planted. Do you want to come with mummy? Come on then you handsome little boy. So it's finally time that Charlie and I are going to be tackling the new flower bed. We had been putting off actually creating the border, but now we have Arsene Nicholson's chaps and they last week removed the, what's it called? Tuff. Tuff. And so we are just now gonna churn up the soil. We've just started over here with the fork. Charlie's removing a few of the extra ivy roots, which are so deep and well established, but we don't want them coming back. So what we're essentially doing is breaking up the soil pulling out any weeds as Charlie is exhibiting here and basically trying to break up the really compacted soil so that some of the plant roots will have the opportunity to grow and for drainage yeah. and for drainage Charlie's obviously a lot quicker and more effective at this than I am so I'm going to follow up behind pulling out any roots and getting rid of any big rocks to hopefully give all of our lovely new plants the best start possible flower border is done we have forked and we have de de-rooted and de <laughs> de massive stoned um the bed so it's looking good and now it's time for brunch do you want to explain what you're having for your we brunch we have sourdough from a local supplier yeah stay tuned for this because we're hoping to do a bit of partnership with the cottage with this sourdough uh -huh. hopefully you'll get one of these upon arrival that's very soho farmhouse ask isn't it yeah well the bread's 10 times better than the farmhouse bread as well <laughs> and it's made literally five minutes from the cottage yeah so but hopefully we'll get them to deliver another little local well this this i think this butter's quite local as well oh no it's not it's it's bloody gloucestershire that is local not we're 10 really miles from gloucester though. we're 10 miles from gloucester and the white yeah but it's not anyway these are extremely <laughs> local Exciting development, a local lady in the village called Jack, Jacqueline, she is hoping, well, we're hopefully going to have her to come here for five or six hours a week for a bit of garden maintenance. So with all these beds we're putting in, we obviously love spending the weekend gardening, but 
we don't have the time to garden in the week. And so we're going to need some help. Um, she well, I would these. say we each do an hour after work each we, day gardening. We, yeah, but what we like to do in the evening is watering or a little bit of like pottering around. Yeah. And, and just, you know, we need someone to help us keep on top of that. To, to, to do it in a garden this size, we need, by the time you're in the garden gear, you've got all the tools out. That's half an hour gone. Like All the gear, no idea. Well, that That's literally anyway, us. <laughs> duck eggs. No, goose eggs. These are goose oh, eggs. Oh, from Jack. Um, from Jack. Does she have geese? Yeah, she's got geese, chickens. So we're actually going to probably start getting our eggs from her because the oh, farm fantastic. buyers have stopped. Do you know what? I woke up in the middle of the night wondering if that was an awful dream that they'd stopped providing the eggs. Do you know why they have? Um, yes, because the, the chickens have got quite old Aww. and the eggs are therefore quite thin now. Aww. I didn't realise this, but the average chicken only lives like eight years. Oh. They don't live very long. So you've got um, geese eggs, what are you going to do with them? I'm just going to scramble them. Have you got a normal egg to show the size comparison? I mean, it's mental. I mean, think about how big a goose is compared to a chicken. Look at that. Wow! Yeah. So you can have them fried. Frying them, I prefer them scrambled. You can have them fried, but the problem with frying them is you have to be really tentative and fry them on a low heat because mm. what happens is the yolk and the inside cooks quicker. Oh. And then it, no, so the outside cooks yeah. and then you're left with like a bit of, you know, that horrible mm, bleh, Yeah. So you have to be really careful with it. So yeah. you're going to scramble them? I'm going to scramble them. In yeah. your usual technique? Usual technique. Well, I'll show you a technique now because it's a new-ish technique that I've learnt from the masterclass. And then Maestro, BBC Maestro, not sponsored. From Marco. From my new favourite chef, Marco Pierre White. Right. So... Other thing is you should never wash your frying pan properly. Like you should just do this with it. Really? You should never, I didn't realise this, but apparently these frying pans are, I mean, with a non-stick, if you're scrubbing them, you're removing oh, yeah. the non-stick. And, and it's really bad for you if you get the non-stick, if you ingest it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you should just give it clean, clean by hand really. Right. First up, you want a lovely bit of bread. Dig it dig. Oh. We absolutely love toast, mummy. We do. Toast is our favourite form toast of brunch. Toast is one of life's sort of seminal moments when you get a bit of nice bit of toast. Yes. Right. Okay, where is the... Toasting on the arbor is another magical thing altogether. We need to clean this arbor, but there you go. So for anyone that hasn't seen this, you just toast it on top like this. And what I like is, I mean, as long as you're careful, because you can burn it a bit more easily on here. Mm. But what I like is it does toast, slowly toast the bread rather than just char it. Do you know what I mean? Often yeah. when you get, and actually that's was in BBC Marshall. Marco P.I. White used to hire someone in his Michelin star restaurant. Their only job was toasting the brioche. <laughs> their entire job, because it part of the tasting menu, the brioche was crucial. Mm. And that was their only job. Mental, right? Wouldn't it be great if in a future cottage we had an aga? I'd love a mini aga. Yeah. The mini ones, you know, the half ones. And yeah. To be honest, stay tuned because that could happen. That would be amazing. If aga get their act together, because to be honest, mode of the day, mode of the day. We obviously work in social media, and people comment below if they know what an aga is, because I worry that they're not doing a very good job of marketing these days, <laughs> and young the young audiences don't know the value of what one of these does. It's mm. a lot more than an oven, mm. and obviously I grew up with one. I was fortunate I grew up with one. But they're, once you've got one, they're so well made, you don't really buy another. No. So from a business perspective, unless they're acquiring new customers, which I don't think they are, because mm. a lot of, even some of our friends didn't know what they are. Yeah. So I'll go, sort it out. So what's next with your goose uh, scrambled egg? So next up, well this is for any scrambled egg now. I, there's a few different ways of doing scrambled egg and I mix it up depending on how I like to do it. So sometimes I will whisk the eggs in a bowl. Sometimes I'll just break the yolks up gently in the bowl so it swirls all through when you put it in. Mm -hmm. But then the ultimate way, I'm just keeping an eye on that, is, uh, is to just crack the eggs straight in. Obviously melt the butter. Scrambled eggs is all about the heat. So I've got it on the low heat. This is low heat, but you want it on really low heat because you're going to be stirring it and breaking it up. How's rather the toast than cooking doing? It quickly. Sorry, it's just a bit stanker. No, oh, I would say that's enough for me actually. Wow, that is thick. Yeah, I remember this from before. So we might have to fish out. I might have to fish out. Wow, that's huge. Yeah. Put some seasoning. Right, and now all you do is you do this. You punch the yolk and then you mix them in. Now it all depends on how you like your scrambled eggs, right? But this is 
is going to leave loads. It's going to be a very yolky scrambled egg. You must be yolking. <laughs> and now it's a case of just slowly moving it around. Until it's cooked to your desired yeah, effect. Yeah, exactly. Or slightly under, because then it continues Sli cooking. It does, it does continue cooking in the pan. So if, if you were serving, this is the other thing Mark up here, right? Like, going to be going on about him, but I, I love his mantra. Oh. Alexa, timer off. So I would serve this in the pan if there were many of us. But it is obviously just, this is all just for me. The French say that your eggs should walk, which oh. means that they should move, like they should be quite Bouncy. runny. But for me... That's perfect, that's how I like it. It's pretty good. Yeah. Prettiest serving in the world. That looks like a bloody good scrambled egg to me. Nice. Boom. Boom. All right, now time for yours. Okay, we are fed and caffeinated after brunch, and the next step, as you can see, it is now kind of raked and evened out a little bit. Now we're going to add some goodness back to the soil with some of this compost. Nice manure, isn't it? Yeah. To be specific. And just um, like that, the rain has started, but this should add good. some nice nutrients back into the soil. A bit of rain's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Right. If I cut them, yep. you can lift them up. Spread them. trying to think which ones are perennial, which ones are evergreen and space them out accordingly so that this border looks pretty good at all times of the year. So we've laid everything out according to its type and we've started with a few of the more chunky voluminous plants like the hydrangea annabelles and then the grasses will be really good anchor plants as well. They'll start to get really voluminous. So we've started by spreading those out. What's next I'm doing? So I think, so if we think about obviously the heights of things as well. Yeah. So we've got the evergreen element in. So maybe let's finish the evergreen bit. So for example, so, because these grasses will get massive. Yeah. So I think they need to be quite central. Yeah. Well, central to back. Yeah. So that one can fill that space. So it's almost yeah. like a diagonal. Yeah. So, that, so hang on and think about how many in each quadrant as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we can probably stick another one those in somewhere here maybe it's quite close to the other and then maybe one more down here bedroom and we can get a great bird's eye view of it here <laughs> bird's eye view of charlie's bottom as he does some instagram stories but you can see how important this border is because it really is our main bedroom view and it's not showing quite as well on camera obviously because of the distance but from from my eyes this looks absolutely incredible obviously we've got this section to do next but step by step we are getting there I think we are pretty happy with the positioning of everything, bearing in mind how big everything is going to get when it's in full bloom and in a year or so. So now it's time to get our trowels and our kneeling pads and start planting.
at this. Cotswold delivery, hydration station. Pricks and clover. What have we got there? That's a coconut and raspberry and uh, rose, I think, cake. Mm. Do you want to take a piece? A well-deserved tea break as we have just finished the planting. Looks a little bit messy around the edges because of all the soil, but I think it's going to rain a lot this afternoon and over the next few days so that'll all get watered back in. And it's looking amazing considering we've probably spent about four hours out here in total and we now have a brand new flower bed. It's going to be amazing seeing this grow and get extra voluminous. Finally, border number two is done, just as the rain starts. Project manager is here to inspect. What do you think, Dexy? Have we done a good enough job for you, sir? So now it's time to just tidy everything up. Charlie's gonna give everything an extra water. And then I think it's time to start our shepherd's pie. Do we have your approval, Dexy? Yes, mommy, I give you a solid seven out of 10 for your hard efforts. While that timing could not be more perfect, the rain has just started as we finish. Look how awful the yew hedge looks. Oh my goodness, they are coming on Friday to replace this. It has all completely died, not coming back to life sadly. In here, everything is looking good. We have actually got our first flowers on some of the Cosmos. Pink one over here looking beautiful. I think maybe I need, and there's so many buds. I thought Cosmos were gonna grow much bigger before they started flowering. Um, but maybe I just need to plant these out and hope they go a little bit crazy. Completely run out of space. It is it's so messy in here. Next sunny day, I really need to have a big tidy up. I've got some mange too. Oh no, that's my sweet peas on the floor that need to get planted out. I've bought my dahlias that were inside out here to start hardening off. So much to be planted. Honestly, I could spend three solid weeks gardening and still not be done with all the things I need to do. But one thing I definitely need to do next week is have a big old tidy up in here and also de-weed the floor. So many weeds have started to come through. All of these are desperate to be planted out, but gosh, that's a lot of rain, which is perfect because all of our planting definitely needs it. delicious lasagna for our dinner. Charlie did an excellent job making the lasagna and I had one job and that was to do the garlic bread. So I did my usual recipe with the butter, the herbs, the olive oil and I forgot the main ingredient. I forgot the garlic. <laughs> I had one job and I forgot the garlic. So we essentially had lasagna with oily, buttery, slightly cheesy bread and it was still lovely but Never mind, that proves how exhausted I am. So I've just put live the video that went up on Sunday. It's 
currently Sunday, um, and I asked, and I thought we would redo the question of the day, and so far only two people have left me a hashtag QOTD question of the day so far. Somebody asked where the white throw on our bed is from, and I think you mean this one. Excuse the fact that I've got our laundry on the bed. It's actually a really lovely, it's kind of like a creamy gold throw with these pom-poms on it, and it was from Soho Home a little while ago. It was really expensive, so I think you can probably, I mean, if I was to look again, I'd probably try and just find some kind of material like this myself, and maybe just add the trimming myself instead of buying the Soho Home one, because it was really expensive but I love how it looks against the um, pillows as well. Just come into the gold bedroom to grab a towel because I'm about to have a bath. We keep our towels in this little cupboard that used to be a little secret passageway into the chapel. Um, and it's very loud in our bedroom now that bath is running. The second hashtag question of the day, someone asked when we get paid by YouTube. Um, very random, but YouTube pay you at the end of each month. It's like my monthly salary and it runs a month I think 30 days behind so I will get paid any ad revenue from this video at the end of next month so yeah that's the cycle that it runs in we can keep a track of it on our YouTube studio app which is very handy so if you do have a question of the day then leave hashtag QOTD at the end of your um or the beginning of your comment and I will do my very best to answer it and I haven't done this in a while but if you did get to the end of the vlog please leave the word towel why not in your comments so I can see who got to the very end and I'm now going to get in the bath and have a fairly early night so darlings thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one bye